let's get started with question one. This is asking you about quantities, units, and measurements. So you need to state whether each quantity is a vector or scalar. Well, scalar means no direction. Vector, ooh, let me say, there's direction and magnitude. Five meters per second. Where? In that direction. In that direction. But if it's only magnitude, I don't care which direction you're moving as long as there's a number, that's a scalar. So acceleration, we generally say you're accelerating this way, accelerating this way, accelerating this way, and it matters which direction it is, so this is a vector. Power, we don't care so much, it is also known as a unit of watts. This power is a scalar. I don't care which direction you're flying, as long as you're flying, you have power. If you're radiating, you have power, that's the idea. Work is also a scalar, so here you... I don't care which direction you work, as long as you're doing work, it's fine. So that's three, three points here. Uh, I think what they could give as a mark scheme is you minus one for each wrong. Because you know there's three marks, but there's only two points. Three answer, but two points. So you minus one for each wrong. That's how you could just generally mark yourself. Moving on, we see a graph. A velocity time graph over here. And what are we supposed to do? Determine the acceleration of the object. Now, acceleration, you have to remember, is known as a dv dt, or in other words, the change in velocity over the change in time, or time taken. And we have a specific time interval, which is our delta t, from 0 to 40. So dv dt, uh, if we have a graph of v against t, dv dt basically means gradient. Uh, so this equals to gradient of vt graph. Many ways to find it. So we're looking for 0 to 4. And we know, see where it's 0 to 4? Okay, we need to read, read from gradient from this point up to this point. What is the gradient during this part? So you take the points, read it. I think the one on top looks like 1.4. Yeah, I think the 1.4, this is 0 0.70. You look on your graph, lah, okay? If you haven't tried this paper, go and try it out yet. So let's find the gradient. And the change in time is 0 to 40. Okay, let's write. So acceleration is our dv dt, also known as gradient. <laughs> I'll just write everything. Lah. In the actual exam, if you write out all this stuff, it's good practice. In case you do something wrong, at least you are very clear that you knew what to do, you just plucked the wrong values in, maybe. So 4 minus 0. This will give you 0 0.175, and that is our answer. You can, usually, you, if they didn't specify, you can write this to 2 or 3 SF. So, or either one is fine, 0 0.18 or 0 0.175. Here, there's two marks. So, one mark usually goes for final answer. The other one could be coming from this idea that you knew that what is acceleration and how it relates to velocity. You knew about gradient, you knew about DVDT, that's one mark for you. Okay, next. Determine the distance moved by the object from time t 0 to 4. So, okay, so we have a vt graph. The gradient is acceleration. Let's write some notes. Gradient is acceleration. How to find distance? Area under the curve. So, the area under curve, also known as the integration, or the integral, is distance travel or otherwise we call displacement so when you find displacement what's the what's the time period zero to four or so maybe let's write as a first plan here that the distance or displacement la, equals to the area under the curve or the graph you know the, this is not a curve right best better is the area under graph or area between graph and well, x-axis. So we go and see the, the area here. Between 0 and 4, uh, the area is very big. It is this, let me sketch it out, entire area up to this point. Yep, something like that. So there are many ways to find the area. It's whatever method you use. As long as you find the area, you'll be okay. You can even use a kinematics equation, but let's just find the area of a trapezium right there, this whole thing. Okay, so oh, here we have an area of trapezium, I guess we could do that. Half 
Well, area is like this, right? So half times, I guess the base, 4 seconds, so this is 4. Then the two heights. What's the two heights? One side is 0 0.7, the other side is 1.4. And that will give me the whole area. So you just add together. This is using the area of a trapezium. With this, you should get 4.2 meters. So we can just write 4.2 meters. Some of you may prefer to use the Stuva equation. So another possible method is to use V square equals to U square plus 2AS. Yes, you can use that to find S if you want to. Okay, but recommend to use the easier method. Lah, okay, so here one mark. One is usually uh, somewhere on this side. Distance is area under the graph. If you knew that principle, you're good to go. Okay, I think this is the main part. Let's go to C1. Now we go to force. Definition of force. The original definition of force is related to Newton's second law, which is the net force is proportional or equals to the rate of change of momentum. DP, DT. That is the best answer you can give. Or you can say change in momentum over change in time. Can la, can la. Okay. So the easiest one to say is force is the rate of change of momentum. If they ask you to define Newton's second law, then you must say law, net force equals to dp dt. But if they say just force, your change of momentum is fine. So this is usually A1 or B1 mark. Just one mark. Yeah, I call B also can lah. Because at this point of writing, the mark scheme is not out yet, so check the mark scheme. Now they give us a graph. The motion represented is caused by resultant force. Oh, you see this movement? It gets faster and faster, no change. Slower and slower. This whole change in velocity is because of a force. For example, in the slanted part, just now we found the acceleration, right? Acceleration, why? Because of a force. That's why you have acceleration happening in the first place. So now we are asked to sketch the force graph on the object. Uh, okay, okay. When we sketch graph, we stay calm and think. We are given velocity graph. We know that force relates to acceleration, F equals to ma. If there's acceleration, there is force. And acceleration, we know it to be the, uh -huh, what was it again? Rate of change of velocity. In other words, you can say the force is proportional to the gradient of the VT graph. So you can say, if got gradient, got force. How do you know? Because of the relationship on top of on top here. That's how we derive it. Okay? So we're gonna see where where is the gradient? Where are the places where there's gradient? So this first part, there's a gradient. Uh what's the gradient we found? 0 0.175. That is acceleration. So let me write that down. 0 0.175. Then the other side mm, looks steeper though. Because in the same duration of time, here is two, uh, 2 seconds. Here to here also 2 seconds. But you decrease from 1.4 all the way to 0. Here it decreases from 1.4 to 0 0.7. So I would say, just by looking at the scale, that it is 2 times the acceleration that you previously found. More steep. 2 times steeper. You can actually calculate the values. So we need to know... Um, where's the force? There will be force here. There will also be a force here because there's acceleration. Now in the middle, no force. So we just say, nope, no force. Let's go and sketch out this graph. Go down, go down, go down. Okay, where's the places that got, got graph? Huh? Uh, got graph, got force. Uh, they say numerical values are not required, so it's okay. We just draw a line, I guess. You pick a line, lah. I will draw one line here. So here, we say there's force. We got force. We got force means we got acceleration on our VT graph. And that's how I know to draw this here. Then during 4 to 6, no change in velocity. Wow, I overshot a bit. There we go. 4 to 8. Ah. I think 4 to 6. 4 to 8, sorry. No force. Then the last part. Now this one, gotta be a little, a little bit careful. 
Do we draw like this? Ah? No. Number one, the force is two times bigger because the acceleration is two times bigger. The graph is more steep. Go rewind back to the previous part of the, the video if you want to see the, as the velocity graph again. So this one has to be two times of the original. Okay, you see this one? Two times larger. But wait a second. Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Is the force and acceleration in the same direction? Ah? Hmm. You look on the left side, 0 0.175. This is a positive gradient, increasing velocity. So if we define that as positive, then on this side, you are decreasing gradient. Means the acceleration changed direction already. So this is a negative gradient. So you see, one side positive, one side negative. So the force should be in opposite polarity. Ah. <clears throat> so we need to make it upside down. So I'm going to draw two times larger, but in the opposite direction. Like that. There we go. So this is three marks. One, if you have a, I guess a, a horizontal constant force here. Constant. Then no force. Ah, then the last mark, this is the hardest one to get perhaps. You have two times the force of your of initial and it is opposite side to whatever you had in the beginning. So if your beginning one here is a positive, then here must be negative. If you want to understand the physical system better, maybe you can sketch it out. Part 1, part 2, part 3. If you have an object you are pushing, it is getting faster and faster. Why is it getting faster and faster? Because there's acceleration. Why is there acceleration? Because I'm pulling it with a certain force. So the F and the A must go together in the same direction. Well, this, let's consider this the net force. Ah. So <clears throat> this V is going to be increasing. Then maybe in part 2, there is no, no, no force acting on it. So your box or whatever object is just moving along at a constant speed. No force, no acceleration, just constant speed. Then part three. Oh, this is the one where it's a bit tricky. Your object is still moving to the right with a certain velocity. But now the force is in the opposite direction. Net force. And so your acceleration is in the opposite direction. But you're still moving to the right. Huh? You see the V? You will see the object move to the right. So this V is actually decreasing. It's getting slower and slower as it moves to the right. Why? Because of an opposing force. Like the brake. Lah. Your car is moving forward. You step on the brake. The car slow down. It's not like your car suddenly changed opposite direction. No, 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 no. You're slowing down. Okay, so these are one, two, three scenarios of what could be happening here. Okay, so this is 10 points total up. And make sure you know how to think of kinematics, the different graphs and force. This is a good question for that. Okay, so that's all for this video. I will see you in the next one.